I mean, a wise person once told us, um, you know, when we were pregnant, throw your expectations out right before you have your children. I mean, don't have any expectations, but I think you kind of still go into it with expectations. You know, and if any mom parents here, you know that you every, you know, I guess at the beginning it's every month and every two months, every three months you're going in and you, you know, you're watching for these milestones, things for them to do to make sure that they're progressing. Well, he just wasn't doing anything. He also wasn't growing. Um, so he literally still looked like this little newborn. And so we just didn't know what was going on. Um, so our hearts were heavy as in just so much like thought, um, what are we going to do? Like, is this real? Like, what's happening? And so we um, end up at genetics at VCU. That's when we were found the news that um, he indeed um, had a duplication of chromosome 9P21.1, um, which he was the only one in the world at the time. But I'll never forget that moment. We sat there, um, I felt like I was in some talk show. But she came back in, the doctor, the neurologist, and um, she just looked at us and she said, um, you know, if Rhett, it doesn't start walking, you know, in the next month, your son will probably never walk or talk or do anything. I remember thinking like, I'll never hear those words from him, like, I love you, or I was just ready to go home. There is a little mourning period because your life of what you thought it would be is not and you have no idea what you're doing or where we're going or how we're doing this. You know what the doctors tell us is not gonna hold us down <laughs> um, so we we continued to work at it um, and we just wanted God to use our hands um, to you know do what's best for Rhett and whatever his capabilities are. So at this point, we were just full on, um, you know, multiple therapies, OT, you know, speech therapy, what was OT's occupational therapy, speech therapy, and then crevice medic, which was a really specialized um, physical therapy. And so then at this point, we uh, were like, hey, hey, let's go, let's get back to church. Let's, let's get back, you know, get back in the world. And here we go, full forward. And then finally he just was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go look at, look back at Hope. And what do you know? They're starting the expansion and um, a part of their initiative was to have this special needs ministry. And I remember thinking um, a little bit later, like, wow, God, I knew why you sent us here. It just was amazing. Like, I, I thought back to sitting in that back row with my stomach and um, like, that's where we were supposed to be, but we had no idea. I've seen God. It, it's not, you know, like one specific situation. It's it's more like a 30,000 little situations. He just found a way to bring us to the right pediatrician, to the right hospital. He found a way to get us to this Cuervus medic. Um, and she was located, of course, in Richmond. Um, Hope Therapy has been here of course, it's called Hope Therapy in Richmond. Just all of the special needs friends, Mrs. Mack, uh, you know, was Rhett's tutor, Pam, Liza, Naomi. Um, so all of these little amazing things that have happened to us all in succession for Rhett um, have just been beautiful um, and they've all been planned. And we couldn't have really thought about that unless we really looked back. So this, this opportunity for Rhett's baptism is just this perfect opportunity to finally reflect on all the 3,000 blessings that God has done for Rhett. And so I asked uh, Marisha if it'd be okay if, because uh, it's one of his favorite songs, if maybe we could sing that together. Can we do that? Here we go. Jesus loves me, this I know. For
Jesus is going to heal this blind man in, in, in John 9. And um, his disciples say, Rabbi, who sinned so that this child be born blind? Jesus responds to them and says, no one sinned so that this child be born blind. This child was born blind so that the work of God could be shown through them. And I would just say that um, the work of God has been shown through Rhett um, with all these relationships that Hope has created. And um, I think this story about Rhett is an example of how Hope Church is a conduit and not a cul-de-sac. <laughs>